I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to help me build a bridge between what you do and what I do because together we can make people having strokes in our community significantly more likely to keep their job or take care of themselves or their family. As long as we identify who they are and get them treated as quickly as possible. So let me tell you a little bit about stroke. 80% of the time, stroke is a blood vessel that gets blocked. And time matters. Because every minute that ticks by when that blood vessel is blocked, two million brain cells die. And to give you an example of why the time matters so much, I'll tell you what it is that we do for these people. We give them a drug, if they're appropriate to get it, that unblocks this blood vessel. The drug's called TPA. And so that you understand where the time matters, if you take someone having a stroke and get them this drug in less than 90 minutes from when the stroke starts, then they're 50% more likely to keep their job or do whatever it is that they did before their stroke 90 days later. So that means you give it to two people, you help one of them. Well, if it takes three hours, now you gotta give it to seven people to help one of them. And if it takes four and a half hours, you gotta give it to 14 people to help one of them. And if it takes longer than four and a half hours, it's probably better not to give it at all because you're more likely to hurt them. So the time matters here and it matters a lot. And that's why it's so important that we take these people from their house, their job, their couch, wherever they are, and we get them in as quickly as possible. This is a great opportunity for me because okay. I was able to speak to the 911 dispatchers to help okay, them identify strokes better. And I wanted to speak all right. to all of you about identifying strokes better too because you guys are in the most unique position that you're the first people to get on scene. That means that you get the best history and you have time on your side. If you identify who they are, you can call us and let us know that you've got one of these potential people and then we can start getting our gears turning so that we don't waste any time when they get to us. So how do we identify who these people are in the first place? Well, the way to do it is the same way that all these posters and stuff say for the community, which is FAST. And it's you know, s sort of a clever acronym, but it works. FAST stands for face, arm, speech, and time. And time is the thing that matters that I already emphasized. You've got to move quick. But you know, the first three things are who we need to worry about. So face. So if someone's face is unequal, you show up on scene, you're looking at someone, you don't know what's wrong with them, you don't even have a history maybe. But one half of their face looks like it's drooping, Ask them to smile, and if they can, and it looks still uneven, or if they can't, and it just looks uneven to you, that's not normal. And that's a stroke until proven otherwise. So your face is unequal. Arms. You get there, and someone's not moving half of their body well, or moving one of their arms well. If you're even suspicious of it, just ask them to hold up their arms. And if when they lift up their arms, one of them's kind of drifting down, then that's not normal. Or if they just can't lift it up at all, that's not normal. And if they can't follow any commands and you get there, but they're only moving half of their body and the other half of their body's not moving, then that's a stroke until proven otherwise, and we just have to assume that it is. Speech is admittedly the hardest thing to figure out if it's abnormal or not. But we have the advantage here of you show up on scene, you don't know what's going on, and if anything seems wrong with their speech, we have to assume that it's a stroke. Now there's a lot of different things that can be wrong with speech. So, someone's slurring their words, like they're drunk. That definitely could be a stroke. So, if they're slurring their words and just sort of not saying things right, especially if they're talking out of the corner of their mouth, that's a stroke, until proven otherwise. And then some people, uh, <laughs> you know, like they um, uh, <laughs> uh, try and they're trying to talk. They want to say something. They're giving it their best effort, but it's just not coming out. That's a stroke until proven otherwise. Some people, nothing. They're looking at you. You're asking them questions. They're not saying anything back. That's a stroke until proven otherwise. And then other people, 
they're kind of just talking nonsense. It's like, think Dr. Seuss, except nothing makes any sense at all. That's a stroke until proven otherwise. So face, unequal. Arms or half of their body, unequal, one half is weak. Speech, abnormal in any way. Then it's time to just assume this is a stroke and let's kind of get the gears moving. I do want to throw in here, and in part because I'm from Boston and I can say stuff like this, you know, instead of just fast, look at it like it's FASTA with an A at the end, right? Because also there's other stuff that can look like a stroke. And understanding how stroke works can help you to understand what else to look for. Stroke is a blocked blood vessel. Half of the brain controls half of the body. You block blood to half of the brain, half of the body's having a problem. You get on scene and someone is having trouble moving half of their body, feeling half of their body, seeing half of the world, it's a stroke. Until proven otherwise, it's a stroke. And so what do we do with these people? We identify who they are and now what? Look, the reason I'm really so excited about this is that TPA is great. I just explained to you why it works so well. But the reality is, countrywide, 90 to 95 percent of people that are having a stroke, they're not getting this drug. Why? Well, a big part of it is that these people aren't calling 911. And believe me, I'm doing what I can. I'm practically going door to door to teach people when to call 911. But the other biggest part of this is that you show up on scene and you don't know that it's a stroke. And we don't do all the right things and we miss our window of time to treat them. And so getting there and figuring out, man, is that fast exam positive? And if it is, ooh. When was the last time they were known well? Because the last time they were known well, if it's less than four hours and they've got a positive fast exam, they can get that drug. And potentially they can get that drug and we can make them significantly better. So the other part of this is not just getting that fast exam right when you show up on scene. You know, having the suspicion that there could be a stroke, knowing what to test, doing that FASTA exam, but also finding out their last known well. Like I said, you get the best history. I'm at a huge disadvantage. When they get to me, whoever's on scene that called 911, that can speak, they're not there in the hospital. So I'm guessing, and I'm going by what was written down for when this person was last well. And so really what's important here is not, hey, I saw them at 3 o'clock and they didn't look right. What's important is, I saw them at 2.30 and they were fine. Then I saw them again at three and something was wrong. Because what matters the most is this. Given that drug, more than four and a half hours after when this stroke starts, we can hurt people. So we have to know, not when they were found abnormal, we have to know when they were last seen normal. So their last known well time is really important. And when you show up on scene, that is the golden opportunity to find out when that is. Hey, who called 911? Hey, why'd you call? Hey, what's going on here? When's the last time this person was looking okay? If the person can talk, great. That might be the last time they talk to anybody. Find out from them. Hey, when did this start? Do you remember? Was it 1230? Did you look at the clock? Just narrow it down for me. When did this start? Because if we can find out when their last known well time was, and if they've got a positive fast exam, now we've got all the ingredients to know, can they get that drug or not? There are some other things that we'll work on at the hospital to know if we're going to hurt them or help them with the drug, but now we at least know enough information that, and from the field, you're there first on scene, you've got all the key information, pick up the phone, call the Valley Medical Center emergency room and say, hey, we got a stroke out here, and they're coming in, and they got a positive fast, this is their last known well time, and by the way, there's someone here on scene that knows the history, we got their cell phone number. You don't even have to say that last part. Just write it down. And then when you come in, give it to us. And then that way, when we get this person, we know this is very likely to be a stroke. They can benefit from this drug. We're not going to mess around with sticking them in a room and waiting 10 or 15 minutes. We're going to bring them right to the CAT scanner. And while they're on the scanner, if we need more information, we're going to call that phone number that you just gave us so we can get more information about, hey, did this person have a stroke just a week ago, and we might hurt him with this medicine, whatever. This, I think, is the best system that we can hope for right now to help these people. Every minute that we shave off, we're saving two million brain cells. And 
90 minutes from when a stroke starts to when they're in my emergency room getting this drug is a tall order, but it can be done on most of these people if they know to call 911 and we've got a good system in place to get them in quick and kick them onto a grease slide that I'm working really hard to create at my hospital and with this bridge that we're building. So how do we do this? Well, I don't know if this is going to be the best way, but you know, what I tried to work on here was just a sheet that you guys could keep with you in the rig. And you show up on scene, and I know you've got a ton of paperwork to fill out, but I tried to keep this very, very simple and bare bones for what information we need. The top half of this is information that you keep. And all it is is, is the fast exam positive or not, what's their last known well, and just write down a cell phone number to whoever happens to be there that knows the information. Tear this sheet of paper in half and hand the bottom half to whoever's standing there behind. And what it says on the bottom is basically, hey, we think this person's having a stroke. Every minute matters. And we may need to treat them with a medicine. Someone's going to call you and need the answers to the following questions. Please find this out in the next five or ten minutes. And then it's all the information that we need to know if we can give them this drug to help them or if well, maybe we might hurt them. So this is, I think, our, our first attempt at a much better alliance between the two of us so that we're not just spinning our wheels and wasting minutes because I've seen too many people with strokes that don't do well that could have done so much better if we just had a better system in place. And I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if in our community more people who had stroke could keep their job, could take care of their family, and then that way maybe they're able to call 911 for someone else later. So yeah, that's all I got, but any questions that you have, I'm happy to answer. And I, I really, really appreciate this opportunity. I think this is fantastic.